Before we get into what November might mean for business, let's talk about where we are right now. I know quarterly you do a survey of your CEOs who are your members. Where do your CEOs think we are as an economy right now? David, thanks for having me back. Um, our CEOs are in a pretty comfortable place. Every quarter we ask them about their expectations for sales over the coming six months and their plans for CapEx and hiring over that same period. Uh, and we, uh, we combine the results into a headline index um, that is basically a pretty good barometer of CEO sentiment. Uh, and the CEOs in the business roundtable, their sentiment for the coming six months is pretty good. For the first time since uh, the third quarter of 2022, the, that headline index is above its historic average. So it's not, it's not exuberant, it's not uh, going gangbusters as far as our CEOs are concerned, um, but uh, they, say, they see things as in pretty good shape for the, uh, for the coming six months um, based on uh, economic fundamentals. And uh, it seems to me, David, that the one thing that might throw them off of that optimistic outlook is something that happens in uh, something dramatic that happens in our politics or our geopolitics. So let's talk about that specific, because you, as I say, you had experience in the White House. You know wherever you speak. How much of a difference does it make who is in the, in the White House, no matter who it is? Can the president really affect the economy substantially? Well, from the standpoint of our businesses, enormously. Um, and in particular, during periods when the tax code is open for uh, renegotiation, when there are uh, potential trade deals on the table that might or might not happen depending on who's in charge. Um, the regulatory environment is dramatically influenced by, um, by who's in the White House. Uh, so all of those things can really affect uh, the, uh, the business outlook from, from the standpoint of our country's biggest corporations. Let's take those three that you've mentioned, starting with taxes. Uh, and the difference, as we perceive it right now, between the two front runners, Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Joe Biden has said he wants to increase taxes, and specifically on corporations. Presumably, President Trump would want to renew the so-called tax cuts, the Trump tax cuts. So uh, how does business perceive the alternative between these two individuals? Well, uh, business very much welcomed the tax cuts that passed in 2017. They had a, have a lot to do with the prosperity that we enjoyed before the pandemic and that we enjoy now is a, uh, a reasonable tax environment. You know, uh, prior to 2017, the United States was among the highest tax jurisdictions in uh, among developed countries. Um, the 2017 Act didn't didn't bring us to the head of the pack, but it put us in the middle of the pack where it's possible for U.S. companies to compete. In 2025, a lot of those provisions that brought us back into a competitive range are going to expire, and uh, there will be a big debate about what to do with a whole range of tax uh, provisions on both the corporate and the individual side. Uh, and the, uh, the occupant of the White House is going to have a lot to say about whether uh, taxes go up or remain roughly, roughly where they are. Um, the, uh, the composition of the Congress for that purpose is also going to be very important. And as close as it looks like uh, polling suggests that our presidential elections will be, um, the, uh, the control of both houses of Congress is also very much in doubt. Uh, Josh, as you know so well, uh, taxes in Washington amount to revenue. I mean, if you cut taxes, you lower revenue as well, typically. Uh, how concerned are business CEOs, CEOs of big corporations, about our debt and deficit situation? Because there's a lot of concern on economists' point. Yeah, and um, as a former budget director, I'm I'm concerned as well. Uh, the the CEOs of the business roundtable are very concerned about the fiscal situation of the United States. Um, but from from their perspective, uh, the United States doesn't really have a problem that we're undertaxed. Um, certainly on the corporate side, um, we have a problem of overspending. And if you look at historic data about 
taxation, tax revenue as a percentage of GDP and government spending as a percentage of GDP. You see that the tax revenue over time is, is rel we're in a, a relatively historically average place in how much of our GDP taxes are taking. Uh, what's gone way out of whack is the uh, is the spending. And so um, our members would like to see the Congress uh, and the president come together on sensible ways to uh, to control what has been out of control spending uh, and uh, not try to solve the deficit problem on the backs of uh, of our businesses because uh, our economy will not flourish if uh, if the uh, the tax environment is not competitive and we are at risk of becoming a once again an uncompetitive competitive tax jurisdiction the second thing you mentioned was trade and tariffs uh, of course uh, president trump when he was president imposed a variety of tariffs those for the most part have not come off under President Biden. We're now talking about further tariffs from candidate Donald Trump at the present time. How concerned is the business community with increased tariffs, particularly some of the ones we're talking about, like 50, 60 percent, even 100 percent on Chinese products? Yeah, that would be uh, it would be highly disruptive. Um, the United States cannot operate in in the modern world as its own bubble of, uh, of a protected economy. We are in a global economy. And we damage our own prosperity and our own future competitiveness if try to protect ourselves uh, by uh, tariffs or any other measure from a global international trading environment. Nobody knows that better than uh, the big companies that are members of the Business Roundtable because they operate in, uh, most of them operate in many countries around the world. And uh, they need to be able to compete. A uh, 10% tariff across the board uh, would be a huge tax on the American people. Uh, and uh, to the extent that those are goods that consumers use, the consumer would pay the cost of that. And to the extent that a 10% tariff makes it more expensive uh, for companies to produce here in the United States because their inputs are more expensive, we'd be driving business overseas. So. From the perspective of, uh, of business, um, a tariff like that would be a, a huge mistake. And uh, we certainly hope that doesn't come to pass as a, as a policy matter. Overall, what the business community would like to see is a real affirmative trade agenda from the, from the United States. That is negotiating trade deals, especially with our friends and allies in Asia um, which is the only way we're going to succeed in competing with China. The third thing you mentioned was regulation. Obviously, Donald Trump, when he was president, had a very deregulatory agenda. President Biden has not embraced that. In fact, in some areas, such as antitrust enforcement, has really doubled down on regulation. Give us a sense of how the business community perceives this alternative on regulation between these two candidates. Um, the uh, the business community has been very disappointed with the regulatory environment uh, in the United States today. Um, in that same survey we just talked about, we asked our CEOs the question of, do they think that um, that government policy is undermining uh, free enterprise in the United States? And uh, over three quarters of them said yes. They do believe that government policy is undermining free enterprise. And among those who said yes, almost all of them cited regulation as a key concern. Uh, and about two thirds of them said that uh, antitrust policy is a key concern. So uh, the, uh, the business community is, is not happy with the regulatory uh, approach that the Biden administration has taken, particularly um, out of the Securities Exchange Commission. Um, but a lot of other areas as well, um, we're, uh, we're hopeful to get improvements on that score. Uh, but on that score, a Trump administration would almost certainly be preferable.